would happen if Mario was flipped upside down? I made custom Mario levels that he can only beat with reverse gravity in hopes that Nintendo might notice and hire me. This first level had to be perfect. In this area, the only way to progress is to use a gushin. So naturally, the first thing I did was delete the gushins. I needed a cool way to flip Mario's gravity at the start and wanted a reward he could only get while upside down. After racking my brain, I settled on a customized gravity key and gravity chest for the level. I went on to the model's resource website and found an awesome looking key, but still needed some editing to truly earn the legendary title of Gravity Key. I took the model into Photoshop and altered the color to a dark purple and it looked perfect. Then I took a treasure chest and made it dark purple as well, replaced both of the original game files, and added the epic gravity key and chest into the level. I tried these hidden tower chomper guys and placed them in the ceiling. When I tested those, they couldn't even attack downward and were invisible. So let's add another point to our failure counter. I had to think differently about what could work, and I came up with a new strategy to use spike traps and lava bubbles. Because Mario needs to stay on the ceiling for this level, I placed the spike traps in groups above. As the level progressed, I put more spike traps in each group and added some traps floating near moving platforms. Now a misjump here would be fatal. Then, embracing my dark side, I spiked up the entire ceiling at the end to raise the difficulty. Lava bubbles seem like a great idea as they can jump up and hit Mario, but I forgot about one crucial thing. Mario might be able to capture them and just swim around to skip most of the challenges. So, I tested out the first one, and Mario got burned when he touched the ice water, and then the bubble vanished. Okay, so I guess that works. Just like the spike traps, I added more bubbles the further Mario gets in the level to ramp up the challenge. I wanted Mario to break his way through a wall, so I stole these breakable blocks and a sherm from the Metro Kingdom. I had no idea if capturing the tank would flip its gravity, so I really wanted to test it. When I got back in there and finally captured the sherm, Tank Cosplay Mario immediately switched to normal gravity until the moment he left the capture. I'm really happy with how the level design turned out. The level feels challenging but fair, and taking damage is avoidable. Well, if you're better than I am. The final stretch had spikes everywhere with only a few safe spots to jump on before running ahead. Once Mario made it past the final lava bubble barrage, he opened the gravity chest and grabbed the tasty yellow moon. I can only hope that impressing Nintendo will taste just as delicious. A few regular levels wouldn't be enough to get Nintendo's attention, so I decided that if Mario can collect four different colored gravity moons in different levels, I would make an epic final challenge that would blow their minds. To get the next color of moon, I took this tower stage that revolves around becoming dry bones and searching for moon shards. Because I hate myself, I deleted the dry bones and erased all the moon shards. Little did I know, Erasing those moon shards is what crashed my game for the next two hours. Why, Miyamoto, why? After trying every other thing I could think of, I finally figured out the problem and got back to work. Uproots are one of the best captures in the game, so I wanted to utilize them in this next level. Unlike the Sherm, the Uproot did switch gravity, so my brain started exploding with possibilities. I took breakable blocks and scaled them up to be huge, but they made it almost impossible to see Bulbasaur Mario. I also kept falling through the sides of the blocks and hated my creation so far. I spent way too long doing slight adjustments and testing to make it work, but none of what I did felt right. In a frustrated rage, I scrapped the ideas and started over. Instead of falling from the top, I wanted Mario to have to actually start at the bottom and climb the tower upside down. I tried a few different types of blocks that all had issues until I settled on this glorious, life-changing, vibrant blue block. I wanted these falling boulders to crush Mario, so I built a maze out of the blueberry blocks. The path forward was blocked off until he could hit this hidden B-switch. I felt bad for obliterating all the dry bones, so I brought one back to become his final form, Anti-Gravity Bones. For some reason in Anti-Gravity mode, he can't fly upwards or downwards or you know what I mean. Dry Mario can only slowly hover toward the ceiling while moving toward the orbs of doom. Next, I wanted a zone that needed a bit of mechanical skill to move through. I placed those breakable blocks that almost broke my sanity in a way where Mario's thick skull smashes through them while wall jumping. There's even a hidden heart in the middle for a lovely secret. For the last challenge of this level, I wanted Mario to move upward through this pinball zone. More painful rocks descend as Mario strategically falls upward. I placed the gravity key at the beginning and the gravity chest at the very top and my masterpiece was ready. I love the way the look and the gameplay turned out. 
These blueberry blocks made it feel so Mario Sunshine-like. The turning cylinders were fun as an obstacle element that Mario also needs to stand on to move through the area. Mario cap-slapped the gravity chest and grabbed a cherry-flavored moon. Two more flavors to unlock the ultimate challenge. I wanted to check in with my friend Manx Ninja Pig to see what he thought of these levels. Hey Manx, do you think Nintendo will like these levels? They're way too easy for Nintendo. Even a noob like me could beat it. After hearing that feedback, I needed the next level to be a real test of upside-down skill. So I started with this Metro-themed balance beam zone. These swinging girders are tough to walk on normally, so I wanted to force Mario to somehow run underneath them. With that as the basis for the custom level, I lowered the starting and ending platforms and deleted some blocks underneath. I had to move the death area downward so Mario wouldn't instantly die while running upside down. I'll be honest, this level crashed so much that I almost gave up on this video completely. I even deleted most of the footage of me experimenting with it because I was so discouraged. I don't think I'll ever get to work for Nintendo. I took a day off and came back the next day and it was clear I had no choice but to keep going. I needed to show my resilience to be truly worthy of being an employee at Nintendo. So I restarted this level from the beginning. I placed these huge blocks everywhere and then tried to change the scale, but it made Mario fall through them. I took a lot of fixed beams instead as ground, which ended up working better with the camera. I wanted to keep the threat of the Hammer Bros, but needed to move them down underneath Mario. I made it so they could throw hammers at Mario, but also could jump into him on the ceiling. I booted up the level and crossed my fingers. It didn't crash. Playing through the course was really tough. The controls went upside down or reversed and kept messing with my head. The camera was really hard to control and it made it difficult to always see the Hammer Bros and where I was going next. Just one more gravity moon to unlock the epic final level. I chose a level with giant rotating buildings in space. I love that Mario could still use the buildings as intended, but needs to run underneath to progress. I added some stationary buildings to be the starting and ending points for Mario and placed a gravity key at the beginning and the gravity chest at the end. I wanted to add some athletic spice, so I brought in poles that Mario can swing and jump from. I had to experiment to find the correct distance these should be apart, but eventually got it. I even deleted some of the buildings to replace them with poles later on to truly test Mario's ability to switch between jumping and swinging quickly. I got rid of the blocks and most of the flying Goombas and added some annoying mosquito enemies from the Metro Kingdom. The bugs worked perfectly as they can fly around and charge at Mario while he's upside down. We were ready to test Mario and see if he could earn the title Gravity Master. Gauging the jump timing with the poles was still quite tough. I was worried that the bugs would be too easy to dodge, but they actually surprised and killed me a few times while I focused on jump timing. I really like how this one turned out as it's simple with the elements used, but still the toughest level yet to complete. Gravity Master Mario was about to go head to head in an epic upside down boss battle. I had to think of which fight would work well and tested a few different bosses with terrible results. When I thought of using Madame Brood, I knew it would be perfect. I took these invisible platforms from the Sand Kingdom and used them to create a ceiling above the boss. Since Mario is now a master of gravity with his four different flavored moons, I wanted it to look like he was able to walk on air. It was a bit tricky to get enough jump height to capture the Golden Chomp, but the fight itself needed more. I remember playing some underwater levels with eels coming from all directions, so I wanted to incorporate them into this fight as if Madame Brood herself was summoning them to attack. I started by putting some above and below the arena. The ones underneath didn't trigger because Mario could never get close enough. To make it more dangerous, I ended up making a full circle of sideways attacking eels around the perimeter of the arena. I also added in giant piranha plants to spit poison at Mario as he tries to capture the golden chomp. I wanted to make a giant gravity chest appear after defeating the boss and tried to edit the reward inside. Only one way to see if it worked, I jumped into the fight. Even though I knew where the eels were, they were completely invisible until I triggered them. My focus on trying to capture the golden chomp made it extremely difficult to avoid the eels. The piranha plants added two more difficult elements I didn't even anticipate. When throwing Cappy too close to him, they ate him and made it impossible for me to capture the chomp. When I finally did become Golden Chomp Mario, the piranha plants got in the way and gave Madame Brood more time to catch up to slap me out of the capture. Mario finally launched the sweet, sweet gold chomp at Madame Brood for the third time to defeat her and spawn the giant gravity chest. Would the reward be special or would it crash the game? When Mario opened the chest with the gravity key, he uncovered the fabled Mega Moon and instantly devoured it. 
Now Mario's journey is not over yet. To see him face brutally hard bosses, click on the video on the screen right now. Please subscribe so Nintendo will hire me. I'm Aristotle, and thanks for watching.